So today I'm gonna to answer what are the consequences for accidentally infringing on someone's patent. Hi, I'm J.D. Hoovener, owner and founder here at Bold Patents Law Firm, also the author of Bold Ideas, The Inventor's Guide to Patents. It's a tutorial that everyone should get a hold of. So click below and get a copy of your book. It's the Bold Inventor's Kit, as well as your options for patent searching and patent application drafting too. I've helped thousands of inventors over my 10 years in doing this, and also helped get them over by almost 500 patents as of today. So let's talk about this question about accidental infringement. This question came up in our podcast yesterday, and it's a really good one. Unfortunately, the way the laws are laid out, whether you intend it or not, accidental or on purpose, you're still infringing. And that means you could still be liable for having to be you know, shut down or pay damages if enough have accrued. So a couple of things to think about here, just at the initial onset. There are additional damages you can be held liable for if you're a willful, a knowing infringer. And the ways you can do that as the patent holder, which we've talked about before, is labeling on your product, patented, US patent with a number, or outright sending a letter to someone saying, look, we have a patent on this, we're putting you on notice, please stop, and if you continue to infringe, Knowing that, in light of that, you can get triple damages. So on the accidental side, if it's truly that way, maybe you're a smaller company and you, you didn't take a look first, you could still be liable for infringing one or more patents underlying your product. So when you get that cease and desist letter, which is typically how a small business or individual finds out that maybe they're infringing, the best course of action is to get with the patent attorney to assess whether that underlying rights holder is legitimate, right? Take a look at the patent claims, or if it's a design patent, look at the drawings, and see, compare that to what you are selling. And if there's really something that actually has some merit, then I think you should really evaluate the case and see what they're asking for. Usually, if the company has deeper pockets and a big portfolio, they're likely just looking to have you stop the infringement, which is almost like an injunction, which you can get from a court. But if they're now seeking to threaten litigation, damages, you've got to take a look and see whether you want to dig in and fight this or not. And I guess it really comes down to, on the litigation side, how much damage, right? How many years or months, how many products have you sold that might be potentially infringing? And what's the overall scope of potential damages? If it's really quite small, maybe you only sold a few, or it's been only a couple of weeks since you've been selling, it likely, like I said, it's more of that former case where it's like they're just wanting you to stop. But if it's a lot of effort that's been put into it, let's say you have investors on board, you have a lot of R&D, you've built tons of product, it's all on its way on a ship, cargo ship, getting ready to land at customs here in another week and you've got this letter to deal with. Well, now you gotta work on a little different scenario. And I think you should consider seriously getting an opinion from a patent attorney regarding infringement. And if you are infringing, Perhaps the next step could be is to negotiate a license. That is basically paying a flat fee or a, maybe a royalty payment for every unit that you sell, you pay homage to the original inventor, to the patent holder for the ability, right? For the license, the additional um, you know, power, right? For you to really stay in the market, sell that product, but also still compensate the inventor, the owner of that patent for doing so. So that's a great way to settle. Hopefully you're able to do that. There's some different little pieces within that that can kind of decide, you know, for a way, I should say, whether you decide to do that or not. One of those pieces is, are they also selling, right? If they're selling a competitor product and they've done a lot of marketing as well. Well, now you've really got you know, two very similar, if not identical products in the market at the same time. That other company is likely not going to be able to willing to settle for you also being in the market competing with them. But if they're not, if they're a patent troll, right, and also known as a non-practicing entity, they're just looking to get paid. They want to make money. And so a flat or royalty payment is money. And so you've already put the effort in. You've already found perhaps, like I said, investors or gotten you know, manufacturing on, on, on order, the tooling set up. You've done a lot of that hard work for them. And so really you're going into business with them unknowingly. So that's a great solution, a great end result if that is the scenario. So we could dig into some of those scenarios uh, on later videos, you know, patent trolls, 
and also patent licensing. But I hope this was enlightening for you to kind of understand what uh, the difference is between whether it's an accidental or an intentional infringement of a patent claim. I'm J.D. Hoopener, owner and founder here at Bold Patents Law Firm. Have a great day, everybody. Go big, go bold.